Hi, CC friends. This year, I have the journeyman class in CC. Usually for all things art, I recommend Art with Allie. I will link her right here, her channel. Allie is a um, personal friend of mine. She used to be a part of our community. She is phenomenal. But in my class, most of my students have already been through cycle three and actually had me when they were in cycle three three years ago. So I was looking for some different inspiration. So this past summer, my family took a camping trip to Tennessee and I was inspired when I went in the Life is Good store because these Life is Good drawings are basically just the oils. So I have drawn several drawings for you that you can see that kind of look like the Life is Good drawings. I got my inspiration from Pinterest. Pinterest is my friend. And I just started looking up simple camp drawings. Now, my daughter Hazel drew, drew this one. I just looked up simple camp drawings. And from there, I just started kind of mimicking what I was seeing. And this is what I came up with. Psalm 19.1 is the verse that we're going to be learning part of our memory work in science. Um, second semester. I don't know what week it is, but it's the, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the works of his hand. Psalm 19, 1. So I kind of incorporated the memory work into this picture. And this picture is the one that we're going to be doing on week one. If you notice, it's just your oils. There's straight lines. There's circles. Maybe not on this one. Yeah, there are circles. There are angled lines. There are curvy lines. And I'm going to teach this to my kids and let them recreate it and then draw it over and over until they can color it. You can do any of these other drawings as well, but we're going to put those in our back pocket for now because we may use those for the end. Moving into week two, my class is going to be looking at trees and how trees are mirror images. I have printouts of lots of different kinds of trees and we can try our hand at drawing different kinds of trees. These are evergreen trees. These are really simple types of Christmas trees. These are a little bit more whimsical here, also more whimsical, but I'm going to let them try to draw a more realistic looking tree. And now this is a printout. I found all of these printouts on Pinterest. This is a printout I found, which is just going to show them basically using their oils, you know, just very easy structure. And then we come in here and we are going to draw some squiggly lines here to make our tree and then how to color the tree here. This is the one that Hazel did. And the one I did, by the way, Hazel is 10. So, um, I think I showed you another picture here. Hazel did this one. She's 10. Um, she did this one. So as far as judging the kind, the, the skill level, and then I did this one here. I colored this in. So we're going to do a more realistic tree, and we can talk about other things in nature that are mirror images, like flowers, leaves, trees, animals, even humans, even our faces. Taking my inspiration from our camping trip and these life is good drawings, I'm like, what kinds of animals are we going to see when we go camping? So on week three, when we are studying about upside down images and how to draw things upside down, I think my class is gonna draw some woodland animals. Now, upside down images make our eyes focus on the shapes that we see. We're only focusing on the shapes that we see. This is a really, really good exercise to train your brain. You're not drawing a raccoon. Ooh, there's crescents. You're not drawing a raccoon. You're only focusing on the shapes that you see. And these are just some examples of some woodland creatures that I drew. But there's lots of examples that you can find. Again, I got all of these ideas from Pinterest. Week four, we are going to dive into the study of abstract art. 
every single one of these pictures is the same picture, essentially. They're just different mediums. Right here, we have black cardstock, and the medium that I used is just gel pens. They, they are metallic gel pens. This one, I used a um, manila cardstock, and I used a white crayon, and I drew out my lines for these mountains, and then I came back with some watercolor and painted each section in a different color. This one, I just used a Sharpie. I used a, a fat Sharpie to draw the um, mountain shapes, and then I came back with a thin Sharpie to draw the lines. And again, I just colored this with crayons. So different mediums, gel pens, crayon and watercolor and Sharpie and watercolor. And I also tied in terra firma, that's just Latin. But right here at Luke's in Tenebri Luquet from Johannes, this is one five. This is part of our Latin memory work that we are doing in cycle um, three when we get to second semester. And the same thing here in Ipso Huita Erat, this is Johannes 1 4. So this is also, both of these are a part of our memory work when we get into our second semester. If you're looking for another kind of abstract art, also dealing with mountains and some of the skills that we've already done, this is another one that I did. And I used um, Sharpie and watercolor to do these. But this is a Another example, if this doesn't suit your fancy, maybe you'll find some inspiration from this mountain scene. During week five, we are going to focus on perspective drawings. Now, I always bring in several books during this week and I always show them pictures from children's books that I have where artists have drawn lots of different perspectives. This is one way um, that I teach perspective. Um, this tent obviously is in the foreground, then we talk about a mid-ground, and then we talk about the background. So we know that this tree is the farthest tree away because it's the smallest as opposed to this tent, which is the closest to me, and this tree because they are the largest. A way that you can depict this is these branches are very, you know, spread apart, um, whereas these branches are much closer together. This is also another... Um, way to um, draw mountains, another technique that you can use to draw mountains. And all of these kind of add up to the final project in week six. On week six, this is the final project. I am gonna have my class create their own park badges. This can be a national park badge, a state park badge, or their own personal badge. Um, when we were camping this summer, all of the little stores that we were in had these little cute little badges. They were usually stickers of some sort you could put on your water bottle. Some of them were just pretty little circle paintings. And so I was like, oh, this is where I got my inspiration. This is very, very simple. Very, very simple drawing. You can um, replace this house with a tent, which would be super easy. This one is a little bit more intricate. It has the same type of mountains that I showed you in um, last week's perspective drawing, how it has like the little cracks, but I added some snow caps to them. We have a house drawing. You could substitute a, a um, tent for this one um, like this. Here's a much more uh, detailed version of that same type of house. But here we are with a simple A-frame house. And I, this verse here is the verse that we're going to be learning, John 1, 1 through 7, both in English and in Latin this year. So I, I incorporated that. Um, this one's a little bit more intricate. So this one is going to be, it's uh, the black card stock like I showed you when we did um, abstract art. And it has the um, gel, uh, the metallic gel pens. Um, and this is a little bit more intricate, you can see, but, but it's just oil shapes. So I know that it looks really difficult, but it really is not. It's just oil shapes here. The same fire that we drew during week one. See, it's the same type of fire here. Here it is again, the same fire. So the same fire that we drew on these other weeks, see, so you are in 
the final project is supposed to be an incorporation of all of the techniques that we've learned so far. The same thing here. Now, I used, I don't like the medium that I used when I made this, but the drawing could very well be used. But I used um, watercolor color pencils. And I don't like how they how it turned out. But this is why I do this at home first, because I can kind of judge what to use in my class. So I learned watercolor color pencils, not the best choice to turn out well. But this here also uses perspective, also super, super simple. I use the same line technique that I used when we did the abstract drawing. Same here, here's some of that line technique here. This one is, um, uh, this, this could also be a, a perspective drawing, but the perspective being that even though this tent and the fire is the closest to you, look how small it is in the majesty among all of the trees and the mountains. I love this um, quote from Voyage of the Dawn Treader, Courage, Dear Heart. Because, and I love this, this specifically because it reminds me of how small I am and how huge and masterful and marvelous that my creator is. Love that one. All of these just use techniques that we will be learning during weeks one through five. And I'm going to let the kids be as creative as they want. I will put these out here. They can copy one of mine. They can come back to one of these drawings and incorporate that into a smaller um, disc drawing or a circle drawing. They can use this perspective drawing and put it on a disc drawing. They can come back and use one of these lovely abstract drawings. These, are, these can be put on one of the circles if they want. If they wanna give their hand at this piece, I can show them how to do that. But again, because I have the, the journeymen, because they're a little bit older, I'm trying to give them a little bit more creative freedom and also see what their minds can do. I hope that this has led for you some inspiration. Happy learning.